Hey guys, this is Test, and today I'm going to be showing uh, my Piston Counter 2.0. This is um, the second counting solution that I came up with using pistons. I liked my other design, but I wanted something that was a little more compact, tidy looking, and also, I really wanted to play with uh, a piston pushing upwards as the mechanism instead of uh, outwards, like uh, piston counter 1.0. Alright, so let's take a look real quick on how this does its business, and then I will show you how to make one step by step. Okay. There we go, and once again, guys, I do apologize for the choppiness. Uh, my computer, you know, it's garbage, basically. Alright, so this counter works just a little bit differently. Um, you, instead of giving power to one piston at a time, and then locking that piston in place to allow power to travel through to the next piston. This gives all pistons power and allows its power to flow through the newest uh, to, sorry, <laughs> It allows the power from the repeaters to move along just like the other one that part is similar but instead of there being a bunch of RS nor latches what I'm using here is uh, this repeater is actually powering this piston through this block and uh, as long as that block is up and this repeater is on, I can keep power to that piston, which keeps it up, which give, keeps the power going to this repeater, which, you know, allows this to stay up, and so forth and so on. And each button press, sorry, um, tosses all the pistons up, but just long enough for the next piston in the line to get the power through it to the next repeater which then of course keeps that piston locked up just like this and the chain continues uh... cool thing about this is that it only takes there's only one space in between each piston instead of four and uh, i you know i just i just like it it looks just a whole lot cooler too to me <laughs> um, Anyhow, this is this setup over here. As you may have noticed, I was using a switch to activate this piston counter, and uh, that's because, uh, unlike the other one, we need to have steady power going into the repeaters. And uh, using a switch is one solution. You could uh, have this counter toggleable, uh, or you can have it automatically start counting and reset, just like piston counter 1.0. And I'll demonstrate here real quick. See at the press of each button uh, we're getting uh, another piston to go up. Uh, this one counts to five. Of course there's still that lag. That's uh, my computer not the not the piston itself. And five and bloop! We're back to zero. Just like the other counter. Of course the output here is right here so whatever you wanted to you know hook that up to oh, that's probably a bad configuration for that let's go ahead and do that move back over here and just show the count one more time so one two oh come on for crying out loud three four five and there we go it worked and what we were just seeing there was me turning I was trying to hit this button too many times and that's what this pulse stabilizer does here 
um, pulse setter, stabilizer, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, you know, whatever its real name is, that's what I call it. But anyhow, it just makes sure that, uh, you know, no matter what's, what kind of inputs are going into this thing, it's always got the same output, and it will not uh, attempt to put out another output until it's done its cycle. So, you know, it needs to, it comes on, turns off, very predictable. Uh, set signal, uh, and I was just basically pressing the button too many times, spamming it out, and uh, it was telling me, nope, buddy, sorry, I'm doing my job, I'm not letting you screw up the counter, and uh, my bad for even trying to. Alright, so this here is the RRS Norlatch setup, just in a different configuration, uh, as far as RRS Norlatches are concerned, and then all this gumbly this gobbly gook is just the different uh, outputs and inputs that are going into this RS nor latch. Uh, so let's go ahead and just build one of these real quick. Uh, we're going to do this version, the self resetting version, um, because this version uh, is that just without the RS nor latch. So, alright, let's get started. First of all, you're going to need some regular pistons. It's another bonus of this one, as you can use just regular old pistons for it. You're going to set them down two apart. Let's just go to four. Um, then you can grab some sand uh, or gravel. Uh, it doesn't matter. I like sand because it looks better. But even though you can't really tell with this texture pack I'm using right now, and this is my demonstration. My redstone demo texture pack that I just made to make everything real clean and discernible. So anyhow, okay, so I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, so you're going to need your pistons, sand directly on them, and then in between each of those, any solid block uh, with an overhang hanging off each side. Now from back to front you're going to want to put your diodes down and then a side oh don't need that one oh aside the pistons you want to have a strip another solid block strip uh, going down like so and we're going to put oh my cat just scratched me he's kneading my knee uh, we're gonna put down uh, a wire and what this is doing is, uh, this is the wire that just quickly powers all of these pistons all at once. It allows them to jump up, and the repeaters do the rest. Okay, so what next? Okay. So now, in order to get power to those repeaters, we're going to need our RS nor latch. We're going to come three out to the third, the third block out from the end of our RS nor latch chain. And we're going to create this T. Uh, then we're going to extend the bottom out like so, breaking this block, and we're going to wire this up. We're going to need two wire there, torch there. This is the torch that's going to be giving uh, power to the repeater. Three wire up top, and a torch behind. So, so far that's what we got. Alright. Now, we're going to do, we're going to set up the inputs. This is the input that is going to go, this is going to power the whole, this is from your button. is going to be, uh, our button is going to be out here. Our pulse is going to hit there. It's going to travel through this block, through this block, and along here it's going to come through and hit this you can see okay so we're coming through we're hitting this block we're hitting this block we're coming through we're hitting this uh, which allows uh, you know we're going to send a signal up and out this way and just so that we're not getting our signals all over the place and so that 
those two wires are not going to connect it, we're going to place this block to cut that. And what that will let us do is it will let us power this strip from the side from over here, back here, which is really neat and uh, helpful. Alright, and then for the reset, we're going to place, we're going to just make like a little redstone wire staircase down. Uh, repeater here, because we do not want the power that's going into that repeater to travel into this block and tra power our redstone on the reset side, because we need the reset side to be coming down from there. Uh, same deal with this one, can't have, because this will power any redstone that touches wherever it is, and uh, redstone there, and on this side we also are going to need one more block to cut that wire, because this wire we want just going right along, all the way down here, um, of course I did place that, don't need that, and... This is our output to whatever is waiting for the counted pulse, and this is coming back along to reset the RS NOR latch and get us ready to count again. Okay, it appears that we're all set up there. Oh, almost forgot. This is important, guys. You need to have one tick on each of these repeaters. And, gosh, i got to hurry up so I don't run out of time on my video. Okay, so now we're going to set up our pulse stabilizer. Uh, we're going to do four ticks. Um, I've gotten this working on three, but just four is just more stable. Uh, put our button in, of course. Oops. Need the redstone torch there. And I need a redstone torch here. Boop. And Let's just go ahead and put down a um, piston there just to see our count as it ends. Alright, so two, three, four, oh, and done. Alright guys, well that is P counter 2.0. Oh, one last thing I wanted to show is that you can continue. I mean, obviously, uh, one each piston is uh, you know adds one to your count. Uh, you and you can go. Oh gosh, the lag is awful. You can go up to seven, and then you're going to need a repeater along the line that's going along this blue wool and unfortunately I have not gotten a solution for this yet and I may just very well with, come up with one and uh, do a little updated video but when you hit this repeater to, to continue past counting to seven uh, you will end up with one uh, tick or one pulse pushing two pistons up so you'll lose one piston worth of efficiency along the counter. You can, of course, continue your count. You saw as I did this, I ended up with two coming up at seven, and then it just continued along eight, nine, ten. All right, guys. Well, hey, I'm going to wrap this up. Hopefully, I actually got it all in this video, and I uh, hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, of course, just feel free to ask. See you later.